Toyota had the same badge headache. It felt that no one would be prepared to spend £40,000 on a big car if it sported the Toyota emblem. So they decided to invent a completely new name, Lexus. All over the world, people now utter the new name in the same breath as Jaguar, Mercedes and BMW. And they've now launched another Lexus to take on the 5 Series BMW and the ZDOS 9. It's called the GS300 and Quentin has been weighing it up. With a theoretical maximum speed of over twice the legal limit, this new Lexus is certainly no shy retiring type. But it's not an engine that offers much in the way of sensory delectation. It growls rather than purrs, and after the rather monastic silence of the 400, it sings a disappointing song. From where I'm standing, this is no lantern-jawed matinee idol. You couldn't call it a pretty car. Hardly surprising, since the sales brochure tells us that the GS300 is styled not by wind or water, but by the all-seeing electronic eye of a computer. Pity that, and a very damning criticism for a car targeted at aspirant, image-conscious buyers. Inside, only rear seat passengers are likely to grumble, because that disappearing roof line robs them of valuable headroom. But up front, the palatial accommodation wants for nothing with his and her airbags and a raft of standard kit which, if specified on the equivalent BMW or Mercedes, would instantly double its price. On the GS300, the toys are free. Drivers shouldn't be allowed out on the road until they've unraveled the arcane secrets of the stereo and air con. And no one is likely to favour the silly American-style foot-operated handbrake. The smooth-running 24-valve engine lacks both low-end grunt and top-end heave. A BMW 530 is considerably quicker and more entertaining. But look here, let's not carb. At around 30,000, this new Lexus is good value. It comes with a three-year blue-chip warranty and every imaginable extra. All it lacks is the soul of a Jaguar and the spirit of a BMW. Toyota's four-wheel drive vehicles very nearly wiped out Land Rover in Africa. But here in Britain, they've had a few more problems because, rightly so, we tend to support the home team. Nevertheless, that hasn't stopped Toyota gnawing away at Land Rover's trouser leg, and this is their latest weapon, the Forerunner. It comes with Pleblon upholstery and enough toys to fill Santa's sleigh. Your only choice is in the engine department, a three-litre V6 petrol, which I'd go for, or a turbo diesel. Now, the market for sharp-suited mudslingers has gone through the roof just recently, with new models streamed seemingly every week. And Chris Coffey has been out and about getting in a rut with two of the latest mud pluggers from Nissan and Ford. Maverick comes as a three or five door with 2.4 litre petrol or 2.7 litre turbo diesel engine. So does Tirano, except you can't have the petrol engine in the three door for some extraordinary reason. Prices, well, 15,000 to 19,700, depending on specification. Of course, the ability of a vehicle like this across country is really governed by its ground clearance, the amount of wheel travel, and the choice of tyres. And it helps if you've some idea when to tread carefully and when to use the power. So, Maverick copes quite well off-road, despite its rather bland appearance. How does Tirano feel on the street? Inside, extremely conventional. You'd think you'd be sitting in a normal saloon. In fact, it looks an awful lot like a, a Nissan Micra. The five-door version comes with three rows of seats, accommodation for up to seven adults. But there are a few niggles. I must say, I find this bolt-on step faintly ridiculous. It's too far under the body to actually get your foot on. All it does is cut down ground clearance. In the back, well, there's plenty of room for three people across the bench seat, lots of leg, lots of headroom. 
if you're going to have seven passengers in the car, there's absolutely no load space at the back here. But you can increase the load space by following this simple procedure. There are an awful lot of knobs and catches to release, but when you've done it, even Clarkson could fit himself in here without any bother. Now, we all know names like Nissan, Ford and Toyota, but who's ever heard of Kia? Now, it's not the people who make the orange drink. It is, in fact, a brand new breed of cars from Korea. They may be new to the game, but they, too, have a four-wheel drive machine called the Sportage. It hits the UK in 1995 and will cost around £15,000. It looks like a bit of a bargain, but hardly a rival for the Range Rover in the image states. The new Kia Mentor might have a bit of an image problem too, but buyers will be laughing all the way to the Building Society, because when it arrives here next year, it'll cost less than £10,000. It's got four doors, five seats, and a well-proven 1600cc engine, which originally came from Mazda. Incidentally, it's the best-selling car in Korea. Even so, it's unlikely to make a serious impression here in the UK Top 10. So what has? top of the sales league so far this year is the ubiquitous Ford Escort, selling a whopping 100,000 cars. But if you think that we on Top Gear have any bearing on how many cars are sold, have we got news for you. And to prove it, I seem to remember you raved about this particular car, the Renault A610. I did, yes, it's a very good car. It's not your type, obviously, it's far too interesting, but it's, uh, it is a very good car. Well, let's just recap on exactly what you said. 